Today my sermon is on walking in the dark. In Psalm, sorry, in Isaiah 60 verse 2, it says, it often sp speaks of darkness, gross darkness covering the people. I think we agree the things that are happening in our world today, things in Israel, things in uh, our own country, things in our government, it's dark, it's heavy, it's hard to deal with sometimes. And I want to encourage us to find things that God's given us to help us with this. So I say, how do we walk in these days? God has not left us to flounder by ourselves. He hasn't abandoned us and said, okay kids, go out and figure it out on your own. He hasn't done that. No, he's given us tools to help us. Now maybe these tools, maybe you're for quite familiar with them, or maybe you're not quite that familiar with them. But uh, this is what God's given to us, and I want to encourage us to use these tools uh, to walk in the dark. Now I'm speaking to those of you that are watching on the internet that might have just had a new relationship with Jesus. And this will help you in your walk, and I want to encourage you there. This is the biggest point. If you haven't accepted him and all that he did on the cross for you, none of this will make any sense to you at all. So remember, these tools also are not a formula. It's not babbling out a prayer, but it's a relationship. You're dealing with someone who loves you very much and wants to walk with you and help you through these things. Good, good. Yes. Yes. As you apply these tools, remember you're, you're leaning on a person, Jesus, yeah. as you use them. And I was reading in a, an article a few weeks ago that talks about the problem of biblical illiter illiteracy in the United States. Mm -hmm. The American Bible Society reveals that only 9% of Americans read their Bibles daily. Only 25% say that they read it maybe once a week. And then an astonishing 38% says they never read their Bibles. Wow. They're sitting on a shelf somewhere and they're not using it. That was just, I was flabbergasted to hear that. Mm. I thought it was more, but it's not. Mm. So this is a problem. The very first tool that God gives us is his word, number one. <laughs> That's the first tool he's given us. In it we have strength, a place of strength, safety, and direction. In Psalm 119, 105 it says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. That's very good news for us that are walking in the dark, mm, right? Mm. We don't need to That's walk so in, the, in the dark. God's given us his word for encouragement, direction, uh, correction, uh, just to, um, to tell them that he's with us as we're reading the word. He's, it's, a, it's a letter from him to us. Mm. In Psalm 61, 3, it, it speaks of God being a tower of strength against the enemy. You can use God's word to stand against the enemy. And that's so encouraging. Yes. Then one of my favorites is Psalm 91. I'm just going to read it today. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will... Save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers, mm. and under his wings you will find refuge. This is not saying God's a bird <laughs> with the wings and, and the feathers. It's just a definition of God's love and care for us. We're under his care and his, of his wings, right. so I don't think God's a, a bird. <laughs> so further on it says... Um, his faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by the day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. Mm. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. Wow. You will wow. only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say, the Lord is my refuge, and make the most high your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all of your ways. Mm. They will lift you up in their hands so that you won't even strike your foot against a stone. Mm. 
You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Wow. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him Amen. and show him my salvation. Come on, come on. Now, I love this in the Amplified. It, it puts a little bit more beef uh, on the bones here. It says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High will remain stable and fixed of the Almighty, whose power no foe can withstand. Come on. That's powerful. Yeah. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God on Him. I lean and rely, and on him I confidently trust. For then he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. Then he will cover you with his pinions and under his wings shall you trust and find refuge. His truth and his faithfulness are a shield and a buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror of night, nor the arrows that fly, the evil plots and slanders of the wicked that mm. fly by the day. Come on. Nor the pestilent that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction of sudden death that surprises and lays waste at midday. And further down in verse 14, it says, Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he knows and understands my name, has a personal knowledge of my mercy, my love and kindness. He trusts and relies on me, knowing that I will never forsake him. No, never. Wow. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Mm. With a long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. There's so much wow. in there that we can grab wow. and we can hold in our in our hearts as we're facing these dark things and to point these things out when they come to us. Mm -hmm. No, this is what God's word is saying to me. I'm going to stand on that. Come on. So, to be under someone's shadow, you need to be close to them. Mm -hmm. If you are next to a building, okay. you know, within a block, yes, you're in its shadow. But you're not in its shadow five, block, five miles away. Right. So we need to be close to God. That's one of the things. Keep on working on your relationship to keep close to him. And it's nice to see the seven I wills that God talks about here. He promises to love, uh, he promises, God promises to those who love him and are close to him. So if you're just going to church maybe once or twice a year or something and you don't read your Bible very much and, you know, you don't really work on your relationship with God, you know, this is not going to be helping you whatsoever. It doesn't say that we'll never have trouble, but that he will be with us That's in right. trouble. That's right. right. So yeah. it's not going to be all rosy, but God's going to help you go through it as you go through this. Here's some other words from God's word. In Psalm 46, 1, God is a very present help in trouble. Yeah. You can stand on that. Yeah. He will be there. He's not going to be late. Sorry, God, you were three wait, three days late. Too bad no. I needed you a couple days ago. No, no he's no. very present help in, in trouble. Yeah. Psalm 32, 7 says, Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Yeah. So we can be hidden in him. Run to him. Find a number of scriptures that apply to your situation and stand on them when you're worried, discouraged, upset, or anxious, when you're walking in the dark and don't know what to do. Come on. Here's some other tools. The name of Jesus. Yes. In Isaiah 45, 23, it says, Before me every knee will bow, and by me every tongue will swear. So I ask, why Jesus? Even if you're an atheist, you use that name. Mm. Today, it's a curse word. You know, you might be hammering a hammering, hammering a, a nail with your hammer, and you're an atheist, and you don't even believe God, and your thumb slips off and smashes, or you're, you're, you smash your thumb. You don't go, oh, Buddha. <laughs> you go, oh, Jesus, yeah. even though you don't believe in Jesus. Right, right. And why in the world does this name of Jesus you know, that people use it as a swear word. It's because 
the enemy, Satan, wants it to be dragged through the nut, through the mud because he knows it's so powerful. Come on, that's right. Yes. Another tool we could use is God's name. Jesus is God also. But we have Almighty God. Yeah. We have Jehovah. We have Jehovah Jireh. That's one of his names that I love. It's my provider. Mm. So if you're wondering about, Lord, can you provide for my rent? Jehovah Jireh, please come through. And and uh, he knows what you need and yeah. he'll help you. It says in Proverbs 18.10, the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and are safe. Mm. Here's another big tool we can use, the armor of God, mm. which is in Ephesians 6. I'll read that. It says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the, the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand. Stand firm, then with a belt of truth buckled around your waist, with a breastplate of righteousness in place, with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all of the flaming darts from the evil one. Mm. I take, take on the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So let's go back and look at some of this that I just read, especially where it says our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against powers and rulers and authorities of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. So God's not telling us to go and beat up our neighbor physically. No. He's saying to beat up the devil and his, and his minions with our our uh, armor of God and these other tools. Right. So don't go beat up your neighbor, please. <laughs> <laughs> and also, let's look at some of these pieces of armor. Belt of truth. It's around our waists. It holds everything together. Right. And I'm speaking to maybe, you need to make an adjustment in some of your truth, uh, being a person of truth. Maybe you're fudging a little bit at your work, maybe a few more hours that you really didn't work. Um, you know, other things where you might be lying to someone. Be a person of truth. Right. Because it, very good. it holds it all together. Right. Okay, we have some other things. The helmet of salvation. It covers your, your head, your, your thinking, your brain. And ask the Lord to be a part of your thinking a lot. Yes. If you have a thought that comes in your head, I often say, Lord, please be a part of my thinking. Yes. And don't allow just anything to drop in your head. Right. Because... Make sure you have that helmet of salvation. You know, make sure you're guarding to see what's coming in your head. Well, you have a garment of praise and then a chest plate of, a right, chest plate of righteousness that covers your heart. Yeah. You have uh, the, uh, the shoes of the gospel to go out and share the word about who Jesus is. And you have the sword of the spirit and the shield of faith. And that's a beautiful thing. The, the, stand up your shield. You know, mm -hmm. on the enemy, it says you can, uh, let's see, where is that? Where? Take up the shield of faith where you can extinguish all of the flaming arrows that the enemy is throwing at you. Mm -hmm. So maybe you're going through something and you feel so discouraged. Pull up that shield of faith and go, no, God said he would never leave me nor forsake me. And I'm holding that shield of faith up and those, those darts that are trying to dis discourage me and stop me are going to be dealt with. Come Thank on. you, Lord. Yes. And then, finally, we do have something called this, the, uh, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're going into a fight and you don't know much of the Word of God, you're really at a, at a disadvantage. You can't use that sword against the enemy. So, I would say, stay in the Word, read the Word. You can change now. If you haven't been reading the Word very much, take that book off the shelf, open it up, and yes. read it. Yes. Word. Yes. The next tool is the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Pray it daily over your house, your property, your children, your pets, your items, items of communication, your finances, your health. 
Don't do it in a casual way. The blood of Jesus is very precious. Yes. Another tool that he's given us is worship. Yes. Worship is a weapon. Oh my gosh. You know, sing out God's word. Listen to, to good Christian uh, music that might have God's word in it. It'll help you just establish that in your heart and your the Holy Spirit will bring yes. that back to you. Yes. Another thing, is, another tool is declaring and decreeing. Find something in God's word and say, okay, God, I declare and decree mm -hmm. that you're going to help me, uh, that my son's going to be healed. I, I know uh, standing on, on that God can heal people, people today, declare it, decree it. Right. Just, it's, it's agreeing with God. It's standing with him. Yeah. Another thing is prayer with thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Now, God knows what we need. We don't need to sit there and go, oh, please, Lord, I need a new car, I need a new car, I need a new car need a new car. God knows your poor little car is on its last legs and he knows what you need. Switch into a place of thanksgiving. Lord, thank you that you're going to give me a car that I can afford. It's going to run for a long time and it'll be what I need with all my children and my pets and everything <laughs> that I need with my car. He knows what you need. So be moving into worship and praise uh, rather than just pleading with God. I think that really pleases him. Another thing is to responding in the opposite spirit. Yeah, and I yeah, say yeah, this yeah. in a very careful way to make sure that the Holy Spirit is leading you here. Don't just go out and do your own thing. In my own life, uh, right around 9-11, God was moving on my heart to work with a, with a mission team to go into a third world situation. And uh, my family was going, are you kidding? Uh, it's 9-11, this just happened a few months ago, why are you going overseas? And they were feel fear fearful. I mean, gosh, this is just what what the world was doing. And But I knew that God was moving on me to be a, a part of this team, and he confirmed it again and again and again. So I was able to go out, not in fear, but in faith. And I, it, was a, it was a very, it was a real blessing uh, to be able to, meet other people in other nations and and um, to just be there to help people. Mm -hmm. It was a blessing. So what did you call this tool again? It's called Responding in the Opposite Spirit. Mm -hmm. Another tool is bless those who curse you. Mm -hmm. Pray for those who despitefully use you. Yeah. That really that really gets the enemy mad. <laughs> yeah. He's upset when we do that. Yeah. Another tool is praying in tongues. It says in Ephesians 6:18 and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. Now this is God's secret weapon, mm. and it also builds us up as right. we do it too. Right. That's good. So we see walking in the dark is accomplished through the application of God's Word, which includes our faith, our prayers, and abiding in the secret place. Through this, we build walls and create boundaries against the evil and darkness. Mm -hmm. We stand in his light as we do this. Yeah. yeah. So a big thing is to be a doer of the word and not a, just a hearer only. Don't let these tools just sit on the shelf gathering dust. Just take one or two tools a week and, and apply it. Or, you know, after you've heard this, okay, I'm going to try to use one or two of those tools. Don't let everything uh, sit on the shelf. Do what God says. Now, Jesus talks about people who don't do as he says. In Luke 6, 46 through 49, he speaks of people who ignore him in dark times. Jesus says to them, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do as I say? I will show you what he is like who comes to me and hears my words and puts them into practice. He is like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when a flood came, like a dark time, mm -hmm. the torrent struck that house and, but could not shake it because it was well built. <clears throat> but the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. The moment the torrent struck that house, it collapsed and its destruction was complete. So I want to encourage you. I don't want you to have 
a, you know, a bad situation where you didn't use any of these tools that God gave you and, and you find your, uh, it was a big destruction in your life. Use the sword of the spirit and the shield of faith and those other things we talked about and you're, you're, you're going to have a strong foundation mm -hmm, and you're going to be mm -hmm. successful in your walk with Jesus. Amen. Amen. And that's what I want you to do. I encourage you to use every tool you can. Final thoughts. You're not alone. The body of Christ is with you. Come on. And then the best part is this darkness will not last forever. That's right. Amen. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. Hang in there. It's not going to last forever. This too shall Amen. pass. Amen. This too will pass, John. <laughs> You're right. And you even sang about foundations on our songs today. Yeah. We're talking about building a, a foundation. So thank you for that, John. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was to all the new Christians that were coming in and listening to the song. Right? <laughs>